Hey guys, how are you all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, for you guys, is another throwback movie review. Today, we're tackling Kong Skull Island. I recently picked this up from Target for about, I don't know, $10 or so. Uh, actually, a few months ago, um, I just never got a chance to watch it. And now that, of course, I'm back from Disney World, sadly, um, I was able to watch it a few days ago. And let me tell you, it was awesome. But before I get into the review, I do want to tell you guys that um, that whole video I posted, uh, the last video on the channel with the whole... Uh, you know, laptop debacle. Um, I am getting my new laptop tonight, so by tomorrow I'll be able to upload that Lego Star Wars gameplay, or maybe even tonight, who knows. Um, so we're going to be good, everything's back to normal, sorry that you had to do that. Again, thanks for being patient, but again, I will be getting a laptop to uh, tonight. So, with that out of the way, let's review Kong Skull Island. Now, if you might know, there's a lot of uh, Marvel stars that are in this movie, right? We've got Tom Hiddleston, who's Loki, we've got Brie Larson, who's Carol Danvers, or Captain Marvel, We've got uh, Samuel L. Jackson, who's Nick Fury, and of course we have John C. Riley, who was the Nova Corps agent in Guardians. Um, I think I got them all, I'm pretty sure, but, um, you know, it's cool to get that cast from Marvel into this movie because, you know, yeah, you know them from something else, but also, you know they're going to be good in this film. And they are, they're really great in this movie. I think one of the best selling points from this film are the actors. They really do a great job portraying different characters that you normally would associate with a Marvel movie. Now, getting into the plot, of course, uh, really there's just this researcher dude who essentially teams up with this other guy to go to this Skull Island and find this, you know, just uh, excavated kind of and see what's happening. But, of course, there's some twists along the way where the dude always knew there was a monster and there's this huge, huge uh, there's actually a lot of twists in this movie. But, essentially, it's a very, uh, very, fairly straightforward plot. Uh, they go to Skull Island to find something and they see King Kong and uh, a bunch of other monsters as well and it just goes to heck from there. But it's the stuff that is in this movie that makes it so different from the other King Kong movies. I saw King Kong 2005 by Peter Jackson, and uh, it was a good movie. Again, I, I, I really haven't seen all of it. I saw the middle end over my uh, grandparents' house. But it was still really fun to watch. Uh, having seen this movie all the way through, it's a very different Kong story. There's no, uh, there's no girl that he kidnaps and captures. There's no balcony in a friggin' New York City. You're not, you know what I mean, giant... Uh, building in New York City that he fights on. So it's a very different movie, and of course most of this movie takes place in the jungle, but I think that's a really good selling point because, again, <clears throat> you have Kong, right? But then you also have these other monsters too, like lizard creatures and spiders on these bamboo legs, and it's really cool to know that, and to kind of see that this is really the first thing of like a new franchise with this, uh, you know, monster building stuff. And apparently they're going to be doing a sequel with Kong versus Godzilla. We'll have to see how that turns out. But yeah, I really did enjoy the plot. Again, it's very straightforward. They go to an island, and Kong shows up and a bunch of animals, and they have to kind of fight their way to get off. But <clears throat> it's that it's that element of survival that's really cool. And it, it it's not a war movie, but it really gives that feeling of a war movie. Because when you're watching it and you're like, uh, oh, I've seen this type of film before with like Predator or Patriot Day or uh, Lone Survivor. There's a lot of war movies where it, it kind of deals in the same regard. Now, there is a, they kind of split up, so you have like, uh, who was it? Um, What's his face? Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson, they kind of go off in a separate, you know, area. <clears throat> and then you also have uh, the the military guys and Nick Fury's or Samuel L. Jackson's character go off on a different, you know, two adventure, kind of like the Lord of the Rings where you follow Proto Sam and then Legolas, Gandalf, and Gimli. Um, and it really does help because, you know, we get to see these different sides. Uh, of course, when John C. Riley's character comes in, we see another side. So it's really cool that they can bring all these uh, different aspects together into one movie. And for being only two hours, it really didn't feel rushed or you know, phoned in or anything. It really all connected really well. Um, but going back to that war thing, what I want to say is that really, there's a lot of war movies I don't like because, in my opinion, war movies treat characters like garbage. And uh, very quickly to explain, uh, from every single war movie I've seen, from Patriot Day, uh, Lone Survivor, I guess, Predator, I guess, um, and of course Kong Skull Island, which I know Kong Skull Island isn't a war movie, but you know what I mean, it's got soldiers in it. Um, and every single one kind of follows the same guideline. You have these dudes in a tent, or, you know, wherever they're getting ready to, you know, shoot terrorists. And they crack jokes, and uh, then they die. And when they die, you're supposed to care for them, right? And uh, I had a class in my high school where uh, every single war movie we saw in that class was, uh, they treated the characters the same. Like I said, they crack jokes, they die, and then we're supposed to go, oh, that guy died! But, I mean, I don't give a crap, you know what I mean? You said a freaking joke, and then you got blown up. Who cares? You know what I mean? I'm not, you're supposed to feel sorry that he died, but I don't, you know? It's weird as that sounds. Um, Kong Skull Island makes me feel for these guys. Yes, they still crack jokes, but it's more relatable due to the circumstances that they're on an island, that they're not just 
solely meant on, you know, R-rated jokes, that they're actually, you know, making sense of what's happening, they have families, you get to see the backstory of these characters. Now, of course, there are war movies that have backstories, but this one, I think, went with me the most, and there are a few moments where the soldiers die, and I, I literally said, I was watching on my TV, and I go, you effing idiot, I get so mad. There's this one death in this movie that pissed me off. But anyways, um, like I said, the plot is really, really good. Acting also great. Uh, when it comes to the CGI, it, it looks really good. I mean, for 2017, again, uh, this isn't a Marvel movie or a DC movie or, you know, a, 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 a mainstream big budget thing, you know. Uh, it is big budget, but, it, you know, it, it's not kind of uh, commercialized as this huge movie, you know. It didn't really get that much, uh, you know, publicity, I guess. Uh, so watching it, I mean, Kong looks great, but all the other monsters look phenomenal, too. Uh, of course, the set pieces, there there really wasn't anything CGI-wise that made me go, oh, that looked like trash. Um, <clears throat> maybe one thing, but again, that was, it's too, it's just one thing, I'm not even going to mention it, but um, it was, again, great CGI across the board. When it comes to negatives, I would have to say um, the editing is a little weird. Um, there, There's you know, another, you know, thing in war movies is they have uh, songs that play, right? Like, you know, classic songs that everyone knows. Um, they do that in this movie, too. But, however, sometimes they cut it off. There's one scene where they cut it off perfectly, and it's a Kong attack, and that was really cool and funny. But there's some others where it just abruptly ends, like the music abruptly ends, and then you're, you're done, you know, or, or the, the next scene starts. And it was really jarring, and I, uh, again, it's, it's not much, but it's still a negative, so I guess a few, of the, a few of the editing can be a little bit strange with the music, again, cutting off to another scene. And then there's one other scene um, with the script, Samuel Jackson's character is kind of narrating their, all these helicopters are going into the, the eye of the storm, so to speak, to get to Skull Island. And uh, Samuel Jackson is, you know, talking about, oh, you know, we're soldiers, and soldiers don't do that, and they do this. And, I mean, it was cheesy. Um, it was a cool speech, I guess, but it didn't make sense for what they were doing because uh, if I was in an attack helicopter going through an eye, I'd want to tell that guy to shut the fudge up. I wouldn't be like, oh, cool, let's get ourselves pumped up for war. I'd be like, dude, shut up, we're going to die, you know what I mean? So there's a few script scripting issues or writing issues, uh, but other than that, again, these are very small negatives. I really had a blast with Kong Skull Island. Um, again, I love the plot, I love the, the monsters, I love that it sets itself up for a sequel that, uh, if we never get a sequel, it would still kind of work. There is an after credit scene again with hints to Godzilla and Mothra and all these other people, uh, but I still did really enjoy it. Uh, acting great across the board. It was really funny at times. Had pretty good editing, except for a few things. Script was fine, again, except for a few things. Uh, but I really did enjoy the movie, and I'm going to give Kong Scott Island an A-. minus. Again, I'm just going to knock two points off the editing and the script. I loved it, though. I had a great time watching it. It was funny. It was action-packed. It was sad. It was touching. And, uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So hopefully they do make a sequel to Kong Scott Island. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please tell me in the comments what you thought about Kong Skull Island. And, uh, comparing Kong Skull Island to other King Kong films, please tell me which one you would rank as the best. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.